let's keep this thing rolling. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go with Cortland Sutton on this go round here. Cortland. He was a guy who I really wasn't expecting to really like because I felt like there was a fair amount of hate on him. You, you know? bought in all the hate. I did. Then there was a lot of you know coming out of, in seventeen. He was probably you know if he would have came out, everyone was really loving him and probably would have been maybe the top touted prospect and then maybe the third wasn't wasn't super uh wasn't, wasn't super, feeling it wanted right. to come back wanted to come back and then wasn't super loved over the season really and in, into the off season here but then but then the combine goes to the combine and all of a sudden everything's changed then he puts himself time back to get into back the, on the Cortland train puts him back in the hierarchy of yeah uh, of the upper echelon wide receivers, receivers in this here. class uh has a nice nice three cone Dom- <laughs> Solid three cone dominates drill. there. Has a nice twenty shuttle and a and a nice sixty shuttle. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> and a decent uh, a High decent adjusted speed score. A decent is uh, good. forty for for how large he is. He's your kind of prototype prototype uh, receiver here at six three two eighteen. Solid size. So you gotta love all that kind of stuff. And and of course, I mean, he did he did w- work on the agility stuff at the combine. So that means he's good. Good again. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see that. Three cone drill, just because you know you see him. We'll get into some of the negatives of, of his game. You see him take some plays off here and there. He doesn't always use that three cone drill to uh, to fruition, but I mean he's got it, and, and you definitely do see it show up a fair amount. There's a lot of a wow plays, a lot of big plays there in that SMU offense. This this cat definitely has a knack for the end zone. I think that he can come in and be a red zone threat right off the rip for sure. That that's definitely something that. You know, I'm uh, I'm intrigued. definitely intrigued by Cortland Sutton, and you got to be especially. I mean, obviously, you got the big frame, so that's immediately what you go to. Right. This, is, this could be a guy that you put on your team and immediately comes in, um, and, at, and has an impact. And has an impact at least touchdown wise. I mean, when you when you look back at what happened with Cortland Sutton, there is so much up and down play from from the quarterback position that every game there's two or three plays that you're that big plays that you miss right from Cortland Sutton because of a bad throw from the quarterback or you know whatever but it was it was all the quarterback play was was pretty poor not I mean not DJ Matt DJ more poor right but I mean it's just so erratic um and left a lot of big stuff out on the field so I think maybe once you get to the next level and you have a little bit more accurate of a quarterback and a little you know tighter system of what they want Cortland Sutton to do. I think you could immediately see an immediate impact from a guy like Cortland Sutton, which is why I, I uh, was was pretty drawn to him, kind of off the rip uh, when when I got into the tape. I, I didn't think I was going to be, but but I was. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I I actually I've had a bit of a roller coaster ride with Cortland because I I really liked him a lot from what I saw last year. He was actually one of the first guys I looked into last year before. I was looking into guys before they had declared, which is kind of a waste of time. You need to make sure they're going pro before right. you waste the time on them. But so I, he came into this year, and I was had him near the top of my board. And then, like you, I kind of bought into all the negativity, and 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 then you you get into some of the negative things that he's knocked for, and and you get a little bit discouraged. But then you know you go back and and you take everything into consideration. You rewatch the tape and you look at everything with with an open mind, and then you start to. I started to turn again, and I feel like I can put him back up there. It wasn't necessarily the combine numbers that that did that for me, but it's just it's just the process of how you go about seeing these guys. You don't always see it correctly the first time. You I got to go back and watch things multiple times to really get a handle on it. Right. And so, but I mean, this cat has a fair amount of the knocks. Um, one of them being that he didn't show up against good competition. Right. Well, yeah. When when after I get done with watching. Uh all the tape and gathering all the information that I have and thinking I have a pretty good grasp on the guy. I like to go see what other, you know, people who do this for a living scout wise have to say about this guy and, and, and read up on it. And in the NFL draft profile thing, which is the first one I go to just to see. And it's usually Old like Lance. kind of a, kind of a joke. Cause it's, it's fancy words, right? And it's a bunch of ridiculousness. Uh, for the most part, and it's a lot of times it's contradicting, of, right? Of what he has in the weaknesses versus strengths. So, and he has he has that he didn't really show up against better competition. In, it's in, not a lot of solid competition in, no, there, there for isn't. SMU. And uh, in seventeen against, he, he specifically points to TCU and UCF. But in the TCU game, yeah, he he has one catch for zero yards. But 
you don't want to get too caught up in speculation, uh, but there was there was a lot of plays left on the field for Cortland in that game. Um, early on in the TCU game, he has favorable coverage in the red zone, and uh, the quarterback puts it pretty he's he runs into the middle of the red zone quarterback puts it pretty high on him and he can't even really make a play on the ball um so he misses on there it could have easily won the jump ball had good position on the defender and then uh, just a that that's kind of like uh, it could have went either way there and then there is just one where he just absolutely dominates his man and it's 22 to 35 or something at the time in the third quarter and he is wide open from 33 yards out and the quarterback just overthrows him by like 10 yards it would have been an easy touchdown and maybe the tide turns in that game and maybe then Cortland even has a couple of more grabs after that so it's just you know again I don't want to get too caught up in speculation but he comes out and says he basically got dominated by TCU this but when two years ago he beat TCU up two years ago he absolutely crushed south florida um so i mean i i, I would kind of disagree with there and there there was again going back to the erratic quarterback play and misplays uh, uh, i absolutely agree i don't uh, i'm not gonna knock him for for a couple of games and i mean i know what you're talking about he had that wide open touchdown just 10 yards overthrown what he's supposed to it's do awful ball right and then you, you make that play and then you got a different uh you got a ball game on your hand and maybe momentum shifts right so. and then you can't j- make that a bullet point in your negativity of your write-up, you know, right. if, you, if, if there's a touchdown thrown in there. Um, let's see, what else does he get knocked for? Is It's the route running. Um, sure. Or lack thereof. It seems like they, they throw the ball deep every single play. Right, and I mean, you get you get in a hitch and a, and a dig and a, and a crosser here occasionally right. from him, but you do see a the lot huge. of... You do see a lot of deep shots from him, and I won't... The route running definitely isn't the greatest, and he can seem lackadaisical at times. Um, Crushes that back shoulder fade, though. Sure, and that's what you want to see out of a guy like that. Um, but they definitely say, has room to grow at the next level, for sure. I, I would agree. Um, they knock him, say, you know, he can drift sometimes at the top of his routes or, or light on his cuts, and, like, to me, that has to be an effort thing. Like you said, the look lackadaisical because, I mean, he looks... Sometimes he looks really great, and like right. you have a three cone drill, it's a blue number, six point five seven seconds. You cutting shouldn't be an issue when you're that agile. So if if you see him taking, if you see it not working out, I think it's I think it's the frustration thing creeping in. It's the lax days. Well, I mean, yeah, and I mean, I would you could develop a little bit better technique and a little bit more in depth route running and route tree and all that kind of stuff. But you know, there's also you go back to the erratic quarterback play of. You you know maybe you're not super thrilled about what's going on in every game and then again maybe you're not being too challenged and maybe you know the ball's not coming to you or maybe you're not giving it your best effort on this route just because the co- level of competition that you're playing you're kind of taking it for granted and just right. kind of coasting through some stuff right no excuses just kind of yeah I mean no excuses like sometimes you see him come back hard to a ball and sometimes you don't it's right. like when whenever he chooses to do it it looks awesome like right he bails his quarterback out but when he doesn't feel like doing it it doesn't you know and then he doesn't come back to the ball gets deflected right. or, or intercepted and then you're like man come on dude but I mean he's definitely does some good things it's a solid head fake you know he talked about it with uh Calvin Ridley to lead this thing off about his eyes going back to the quarterback to try right. and just create a little bit of hesitation on the defender's part, and you get that guy guessing even just for a second, and then you can take advantage of that in another direction. You sure. see him, you see him doing that. You see him exploit that kind of thing. Um, but uh, you know, he gets knocked for his hands for sure. Um, he's got some. You, you see some bobbling. You see some drops. A little bit more so, I would say, than than these other guys we're talking about. Um, Matt Waldman rip this guy apart for his hand tendencies right. um i watched basically him. more like the hand placement when the ball's thrown right to you you want to see a tight diamond basically when it right. comes out you so catch that you the catch front the front of, front of the ball right and so he was he was knocking him because he wouldn't always get his arms extended fully from his body and when he did a lot of times they were too far apart man on one of those on one of those things he's like oh he didn't get his arms extended fully from the body it's like the the throw is like Eight feet over his head. Like, put the ball in his chest. Yeah. It's easier said than done, though, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm not, yes, he should, he should extend a little better, but I mean, he's probably frustrated with, uh, that's, we talked about it with some of these other guys, and it's not an excuse, but. It's a correctable issue, though. Right. I believe so. Yeah. And this dude, I mean, this dude has the sideline, he can work a sideline pretty good. He's got the toe drag ability, um, but. 
if that ball's juggling, you can't have it moving at all. There's a right. lot of times where he's making that play against the sideline and the ball moves a little bit. That's not going to be a catch right. in the NFL. I'm talking more about kind of the hand clapping of, of not right. having your hands in position to catch the front of the ball, and you're more relying on when the ball gets close. Basically, when you throw it, his hands are too far apart, and then when it gets close to him, he's trying to clamp down on the ball. He claps at it. Right. And it doesn't always work out for him, which, again, is a technique thing, and I think it's very fixable. And, again, I think he catches a whole bunch of really tough catches. It's like, fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not that upset about it. Another hands uh, issue that he has is, is sometimes he's he's too too push off at the top of a route. You see him you see him grab right. and you see him push and extend and I and I know he's big and he's probably been touched and, and, and wrestled with all game and you can get frustrated and and you and I'm with you, you gotta be able to cheat, but this dude right. just seemed to be cheating way well, too much and he got called for it. You can't lot. you can't especially when you're a bigger guy like that, you can't get caught extending the arm with fully like you it has to be a little a little lower you can't get your hand up too high and when you see that full arm extension especially with a guy like Sutton who's that big you're going to get flagged for it you saw it with Mike Evans this year well a bigger bodied receiver kind of it's it's easier to pinpoint those kind of things especially on a bigger guy and he definitely got called for some of them some of them were just like out of pure frustration but some of them were, were just bad cheating on his part right you got to be a good cheater right can't be a bad cheater I mean you got to yeah. <laughs> um, he's got a strong upper body, though, man. He's 6'3 and put up 18 bench press reps. That's a, does. a solid number. He's he's good. He can fight off defensive backs. He can hand fight you at the line of scrimmage right. or late in the so route. So in that, in that aspect of thing, the hands are good right. on the get, getting off of right. jams. You're allowed and, to cheat right hand, there because that, that and contact's all that stuff, allowed. Yeah. Wipe um, it off. Wipe it off. But uh, you know, and, and and then the contact doesn't really bother him when he's running his routes and he gets you know hip checked or, or ran into a little bit. It doesn't doesn't get doesn't knocked knock off, off his off. line, right. Right. right? And and to go kind of along with all that, I think he's he's a pretty solid blocker. He's very willing oh, and able, for sure. and will finish. Will he'll finish. finish a, he'll play through the whistle, right. and he's a huge dude. So he doesn't you know when you're that big, you're already a blocking specimen when you're sure. that, when you're that big of a body. This dude, uh, he's he's quick off the line of scrimmage, especially when he wants to be, and he played all over the field, like including yeah, the slot, right? Which is you love to see the versatility there. Um, my my one of my personal favorite things from him was I love the middle of the field work from him when you did see it um, on crossing routes and kind of the digs, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought it really showcased what he could be. You know, he's kind of got that big body; he can go down the field. Um, and, and you know that you can get the big bodied vertical plays from him, but what you saw in the middle of the field from him really excited me. I thought there was, especially when he got a ball that he could catch in stride and keep moving. Uh, I, that's, that's what I was really impressed with Cortland Sutton with. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and he's, he's, he's pretty solid after the catch. I know that we'll get into that a little bit here. That was, a, that was kind of one of those knocks that you read about right. him, right? Yeah. So the, again, in, in, in one of the knocks about him was that he, "Quote unquote," won't scare defenders with the run after the catch ability, and this kind of goes hand in hand with that kind of middle of the field work, plus other things. But I saw him in the middle of the field a good bit of times, grab balls, and he was kind of cutting cutting defenders up a little sure. bit. There's plenty of times, and it's not like some he's not breaking down and doing all this crazy movement, but it's 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 nice, subtle, it's subtle. clean movements. And but he's made dudes look stupid, right? Especially with that big frame, and then he has the big frame, so. He, it's hard to bring it. He's not soft. Right. It's not easy to bring this big frame down. So all I kind of like the run. He's not obviously not going to scare anybody because he's lightning fast. But like he's a tough guy to bring down, and he will make you look stupid if you don't come correct. I'm with you, man. He's got that like you, that solid, subtle little body fake where he's just he just gives you a little fake, but it doesn't take him any effort. It right. doesn't. He doesn't have to gear down. He doesn't have to slow down. He doesn't Shifts have to lose hips, momentum. Keeps stride. Right. Get and, skinny. And that's just enough to get the defender just right. a little bit off balance. And then he's got solid speed, and you know, right. He just he just keeps it moving. And like you said, he's a physical dude. He plays super physical. There's not a ton of yards after the catch to to see. He didn't have that many opportunities. Right. A lot They're of the mostly times, just sending him down the field. Or when he was going in the middle of the field or running that kind of that that long that that deeper dig, like it was the ball was poorly thrown and he had to make an adjustment to go catch the ball and there mm -hmm. wasn't a lot of opportunity for him to run after the play, which right. I think he does do a decent job of adjusting to some poorly thrown balls and you see some really good snags and sometimes you see an effort issue, but I, I think that's just, 
I think it's a very correctable thing. And when you get to the next level and you have coaches on you and they're coaching your technique and you have maybe a little bit more of an accurate quarterback and, you know, all that kind of stuff, I think yeah. you'll, you'll see him possibly clean all that kind of stuff up. Sure. And I definitely don't think that, that there's no ability to have the yak. I don't know why, you know, just because he didn't have a lot of it doesn't mean that he's bad at right. it. You know, he's, he's really physical. He's got a mean stiff arm. And he'll lower his shoulder. You know, he'll get a couple extra yards. Sure. It's a similar trait that we've talked about, brought up several times tonight. But he's he's right there with these dudes. Um, Roto World had him charted with mi- forcing 26 missed tackles over the past two years. So it's not a crazy number, but it's it's a solid but for number. His, for his size and, and, and whatnot, I think that's a, that's a good uh, – that's a solid number. Yeah. One anomaly, he had a medical redshirt freshman year. So he didn't – he played like a couple games – and there's some information you can find out about those games he played, but I couldn't find what it was that he had to have a, a, a fresh a, a red shirt. It was a medical red shirt year. Right. Um, couldn't find out what that was, but you know he didn't really deal with any injuries going forward. He seems like a pretty healthy dude, so that's that's good to see. Um, and then we'll get into a, a little bit like <laughs> I read this thing about. You know, they just asked him questions and stuff. He said he was all excited about Stranger Things too. He gave, he definitely didn't didn't shut that down. You you're all you're, you weren't on the Stranger Things too. No, I'm train, good. The huh? cat's out of the bag. I know what's going on now. You got to watch it, man. I don't need to watch the second one. You just get to end, find out more about fir- eleven. And first then there's one, like a twelve. Yeah, then then there's a seven and a six. <laughs> Odds are good, evens are bad. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm good. I, the cat's out of the bag. I knew I I know what's going on now. I I don't need it. Just end it with one season and. Go create a different show. Yeah. No, nah, I'm no, nah, I liked it, man. It was good. Screw you. You gotta give it a chance. I'm good. Oh, cat's out of the Thanks. bag. Cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I just thought it was it was relevant because you were all a hater of Stranger Things yeah, too. I'm good. No no one last note here on Cortland Sutton. He wasn't even recruited as a wide receiver. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? He came, came out of high school as a defensive as a player. Freaking safety. Sure. And the the old coach, uh, June Jones, was like, hmm, maybe you should play wide receiver. Yeah. Great choice. Great decision. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Overruled. Well, and I mean, to be a 6'3", 218-pound safety is... It's Cam Chancellor right, right there, right? Right. It's not too many of those dudes of that size playing that, that position, but 6'3", 218, wide yeah. receiver. So in drafting this guy, up. you're going to get an immediate red zone threat. He plays great in the red zone. Uh, I don't have the touchdown numbers in front of me, but they're they're pretty solid every year at SMU. Um, Left a lot on the field, too, with the bad quarterback did, play did leave a lot on the field and he he's a guy that I'm I'm actually would be pretty excited to get on my team and judging by your room and and how people like him he could very well fall pretty far down the first round sure and be a be a decent frame and yeah I'd decent, be all over uh, taking this dude late in the first round a decent uh prospect to to scoop up and put on your team yeah once those big once those big running backs are gone and Rojo's gone and Carry On's gone and well, I think Carry On will be hanging around for you. I think Carry On will be hanging oh, around. Yeah. Well, if Carry On's there, much longer than Sutton's hanging around. Yeah. Well, then sure. I probably got to go Carry On then. Yeah. Well, that's something you're gonna have to call on draft day. I know. You gotta feel it in your plums. I think I'm gonna take. I think I would rather take Sutton, and I'll I'll just roll the dice on. I'll probably be able to get Carry On in the next round. Hmm. All right. I don't like Carry On. Gets so disrespected. He even had a good combine. So yeah, well, depends. I bet on who it's you back up. To. I bet, but the combine. I bet that yeah. moved him back up. I don't think so. I haven't seen him anywhere near, except for the bottom of the first to middle second. All right. Well, let's let's move on from Cortland. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in uh, with a little bit more rookie wide receiver talk. Getting it in for your pleasure. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> 